ChatGPT recently got a new update called Vision. It could basically analyze pictures and screenshots, and I've been using it for the last couple of days, so I wanted to show you top 10 different ways you could use it right now. And this is part of ChatGPT Plus. So with the free version, you won't be able to get this. And if you have the Plus version, you should be getting it. They said it's rolling out to everyone by the end of October 2023. I just got access about two days ago, and it's available on the desktop version and on the mobile version too. And the way to check is just come up here and go to the default mode. It won't be available in any of these other modes. But inside the default mode, you should see this little add image icon right here. So if I click this, it's going to pull up here my computer here where I could upload a picture. So let me share top 10 very practical applications that you could use with this vision control inside of ChatGPT. So first, I want to see if it could actually solve a visual puzzle. So this is going to test out if it could actually analyze the picture and figure out what it means, not just see what's in the picture. So I'm going to use this example and I'm just going to say solve this here and let's see what it comes up with. It has a question here, so it has to read the question. It has to analyze everything. So it says the correct top view depicted in option C. So it quickly answered for me. It took a couple of seconds and I could actually get it to walk me through a step-by-step -step reasoning too. And it's gonna kind of give me a number list of how it figured out this answer. Now for the next example, I'm gonna ask it to basically analyze a picture for me. And I'm gonna use this graphic I found on Google here. It looks pretty complicated. The text is faint. Actually, the font is too small for me to even be able to read it. I can't quite figure out what's going on. All I know is that this is a history of mankind, but let's see what it comes up with. Okay, and my prompt is give me the information in table format this time. Basically, I wanna see if it could extract as much as it can. And it said, I can't quite get everything because of the resolution. This is very low res. I just took a screenshot on a website here on, uh, that I Googled, but from what I analyzed here, the couple of times I did it, in fact, a couple of different times that I tried this, it gave me a more complete answer over here. And as you can see, it's creating that table for me and it decided what column and what rows it should have based on this graph over here. So this is really useful. And if you have a higher resolution that doesn't have super tiny fonts like this, I found that it does a much better job. So here I'll use an AI generated image. I created this inside of Midjourney. And it's kind of hard to tell. It's pretty contrasty, a lot of black areas. Let's see if it could figure this out. Okay, so it says it depicts a dramatic scene with large UFOs and alien spaceship hovering over a cityscape at night. And it's gonna give me some more detail about the overall mood and kind of that is a tense sci-fi or extraterrestrial theme art. And with most of the images that I fed it, it actually did a pretty good job, especially if the resolution was there and it wasn't really low resolution, it did a good job figuring out what's in the image. Now, it doesn't work all the time though. Let me show you here. I tried this X-ray and I ask, is this foot broken? It says this image appears to be an X-ray of a human foot. But every time I've tried this with different X-ray, every single time it says I'm not a medical professional and I'm not gonna give you an answer. Now, I went back and forth a bunch of different times and I just said, just give me your opinion. I don't care if it's true or not. Eventually, it gives you some answer, but it's not accurate from the different x-rays I fed it. I wasn't able to get an exact answer here that was accurate every single time. And in most cases, I had to go back and forth a dozen times for it to even give me an answer. So most of the time, I think they program it to not give you any medical advice here. And I've only tested this out for about a day with this kind of image. So I'll follow up if something else comes up. Okay, number four on the list, I wanna see if you could solve a complex math problem. So here's kind of a calculus problem here. I fed it and I'm trying to find the function of X. Let's see, it completely extracted this in text format and it's walking me through here of trying to figure out exactly what F of X is. And actually the few different ways I tried it with different math equations, every single time it was actually able to give me an answer and walk me through the work. So this could be a great educational tool. Now, number five on the list is turning a simple sketch into code or a website. So I found a sketch online and I said, turn this into a website. And all it was able to do was give me kind of step-by-step -step guide, but it did understand all the different layouts and exactly what they are, what they represent based on these sketches here. And then I just said, write me the code after it told me it needs HTML, CSS, JavaScript. I said, write me the code. So 
it's writing me very basic code for layout one, HTML code here, layout two, layout three, and layout four. And then it gave me the CSS for the layouts as well. So it's kind of useful, but it's not quite what I've been seeing online because the big problem right now is this version of ChatGPT with Vision is working in the default mode. I really want this to work in Dolly mode. So if I start a new chat here and if I go to Dolly 3, it's not going to have that option for me to upload an image to. And if I create an image, I can't then go back to default mode and try to blend it with another image. So I don't like that these are actually all separate things. It would be nice if we could use some of these in combination. It's going to make ChatGPT a lot more powerful. But at the time that I'm recording this video, we have to be in default mode to utilize what I just showed you, turning sketch into code. But Dolly 3 is totally independent from that function. So I can't turn a sketch into a realistic photo, for example, using this because it doesn't have access to Dolly 3 inside of the default mode of GPT-4. But hopefully that will change very soon, but still kind of useful to turn a sketch into a website or basic code. Now, next on the list, it could take any charts or graphs or any numbers and represent them in a whole different way using tables and text. So I just took a screenshot here on Yahoo Finance. And this is a five-year chart of Tesla and it says the current price. So you could read that from right on top over here. It understands what it's done over the last five years because this is a five-year chart that I chose. It gives me the opening price for that day, the high and lows. So all the detail that I see down here and then I could take it from here and ask a follow up questions. And this is useful for so many different applications. I just took a picture of my Google Analytics for one of my websites here. And basically, I want to see what the click through rate is, how many people are clicking, the position in search. And I just ask it to give me this information in a table. This was just a simple screenshot, right? It would take me a long time to manually kind of break this down into a table so I could do formulas inside of Excel. This just gives me that table right away and it could read literally all the text, all the numbers, all the different headings, all the different rows and columns are created using this picture right here. This is extremely useful, one of my favorite options. Now, next on the list is actually analyzing financial data and using it as kind of a business consultant. So I just took this PNL here. This is just a profit loss statement for Apple, and I just uploaded the whole page here, and I just said, how is this company performing? I'm not asking it to just tell me these numbers from this picture. We already know it's capable of pulling that information on all this text. But let's see if it knows how the company is doing and it could tell us that in plain English. And I tried this with a lot of different financial documents here, including my own company's data. And every time it gave me kind of things in plain English. It says this time we have consistent growth this is Apple after all, and it's going to tell you basically from year over year how much their revenue has increased. It told me things about net income and how that's performing over time. Again, a quick way to see if things are growing or declining. Again, I could have a back and forth conversation with it too about very specific points. We're inside of ChatGPT. We have all the powers of ChatGPT, this time with our own images or screenshots, right? So this is gonna be really, really useful. Now, next on the list is it could actually translate signs and menus. And this one is actually in Chinese, but let's say I'm in China and I can't figure out what this is. And it says, this is used in China. It means turn left, but I could use this with complete signs like parking signs and I can't figure out, can I actually park here? There's a hundred different things on this sign. Take a picture of it with your phone on your app ask it a question. Again, you could translate basically any sign you see anywhere in the world, or you could use it as a simple way to try to figure out if something can be done or not. You could also use it to actually figure out what things are, right? I found this dongle here. I can't quite figure out what it does. So I could tell this is HDMI, but I can't tell what's this side. What is this meant to do? And right here, this is a female HDMI port on this side. And on the other side is a display port male plug and then it's kind of telling me what it's used for. And then again, I could have a back and forth conversation. What two devices can I connect exactly, right? And then I could figure out exactly what this thing does. Or let's say I'm young, I don't know what this is, or maybe I know what this is, I don't know how to digitize it. Somebody gave it to me, said digitize it. I could ask it, hey, how do I digitize this? Well, you need a VHS player, a VCR, and then you need these different things. This is the setup, this is the process. So you could use this as your how-to mentor, as your tutor, to actually figure out how to do a bunch of different things. Now, this example is really interesting. Again, I took a picture here from Google 
And I didn't say anything but to say, create me a lesson plan using this, right? And the word photosynthesis is nowhere near to be found, but he understood what this process is and is creating an entire lesson plan. Here's the instruction to the lesson plan. He's creating the main activities from the lesson plan. Again, just from, <laughs> from this simple picture that I just found on Google. That is incredible. Now, I want to show you one of the limitations it has. I made this video called Top 10 AI Tools. There's 10 logos here. And I said, name all the companies based on the logos. So sometimes I notice even with this kind of copyright issue, it simply doesn't answer my question. And if I get very specific, this time I said, yes, you can help me. Just view these logos and tell me the companies. And for about half of them, it got them wrong. So it got half of them, the big ones, maybe Adobe here. This is Microsoft. It got half of them right. It got Mid Journey, Rewind. It got Runway. It got all those other ones wrong. It's just kind of made up. It said Trello, for example, is one of them. Or this one, you can't even figure out that if it's specific to a company or not, the sailboat, the Mid Journey icon, right? So as you can see, it has some limitations, but remember, it's still in beta. And a lot of the things I showed you, I only had to do it one time. Sometimes, remember, you could have a little bit back and forth, even if it says it can't help you. Have a little bit of conversation with it to try to bypass that, to actually give it a more specific context about your question so you could actually dive a little bit deeper. And if you want to learn about the latest AI tools, we have an entire e-learning platform with over a dozen courses on the top AI tools, ChatGPT, MidJourney, Runway, all those tools, we have entire courses, not just individual tutorials. And every time a new tool comes out, we are usually the first to make an entire course about it. And it's all in one there. So you don't have to buy individual courses. I'll put a link in the description and you could try it totally for free. Now, as more updates come to ChatGPT, I'll make sure to make follow-up videos and I'll see you on the next one.